Is saving the world something we could achieve with just a trillion dollars spent very wisely? That's what author and science journalist Rowan Hopper thinks. He believes we can fix everything from poverty to climate change. His book is called How to Save the World for Just a Trillion Dollars, The Ten Biggest Problems We Can Actually Fix. And Rowan Hooper joins us this morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Great to be here. Uh, so um, you've got a lot of great solutions to a lot of big problems. Where does the money come from? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great question. I think the money could come from tax. You know, the, the U.S. Treasury said that there's going to be $7 trillion of in uncollected taxes by the end of the decade. So we could start right there. Or we could do uh, a bit of quantitative easing, uh, you know, I think the U.S. created six trillion dollars in the last over the last decade or so. Just created that money, so the money is there, and, and that's just the U.S. Globally, we can find much more money if we put our minds to it. And these uh, are or what about or yeah. what? Sorry, what about the one percent? You know, they control 162 trillion dollars of assets, so the money is out there. The idea of getting all these people to agree and all these countries to agree on one thing, though, that's probably the big problem, I would assume. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it is a problem, but my, the aim with this book is to show that there are solutions to the world's biggest problems. We, get, we do get tied up with how, how are we going to solve this problem? It, it, it seems too big, but the solutions are out there, and I want to try and communicate that, that if we have the will to do this, we can do it. We can solve these problems. So let's take a look at some of these problems. The melting of Arctic ice creates all kinds of weather problems. You say we can refreeze it. How would we do that? Yeah, well, there's loads of projects going on at a small scale to look at how we can reflect sunlight back in the Arctic and huh. so cool down the Arctic, which is one of the most, you know, fastest warming places on Earth. So I would invest in projects to try to speed up research into, into this really crucial problem and try and cool down the Arctic. You also say eradicating mosquitoes would be money well spent. Uh, I know they, they carry diseases, but... Isn't there some function for mosquitoes? They, they say that's always the case with these bugs we don't like. Yeah, that's a great question. But they've, they've actually looked at that on a small scale in various places where they have wiped out the, the malaria-carrying mosquitoes in, in whole regions. Uh, and these things don't actually have a, a big role to play in the ecosystem. So you can get rid of them. Uh, you say, you'll save thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives, uh, mostly of small children who die from malaria. Uh, and it won't have a big knock-on effect uh, on the wider ecosystem, mm. as far as we can tell. And one idea is to just give people cash, but I think some people are concerned that, well, you give people money, they're just going to go on and party and go on a vacation. Right. Right. I mean, that, that's what you might think. But th this is, again, it's been tested around the world. Cash handouts have been given to people in extreme poverty. And if you think about it, you're not going to party if you're in extreme poverty. You're going to put a proper roof on your house or you're going to buy an asset for your family or you're going to put your kids through school, uh, which, which these people can't do it. Most people in extreme poverty. So when you look at, at uh, the projects that have looked at giving cash handouts to people in extreme poverty, they don't waste the money. They use it well and they get sustainably off the lowest rung of the, the poverty ladder. Isn't it part of the problem, though, getting it to the people without people, you know, corrupt people in power, maybe getting their hand in that till? Yeah, absolutely. So that would be something you'd need to look at. Yeah. I mean, one way that's really interesting is you can wire it directly uh, to accounts on their phones. So there's no middleman there. Uh, and that is a way that it's being used sometimes. Well, can I ask you something about uh, electric vehicles, which, of course, is somewhat in, in its infancy. What do you do with all the used um, batteries? Uh, we haven't really gotten to that point yet, but right. can, you can't just like throw them in the trash. Is that a problem? Yeah, I think that's something that we'll need to be looked at. You have to, we'll have to find much better ways of reclaiming and recycling all the materials, not to mention getting those, you know, difficult to get minerals that yeah. need to go in back into car batteries in the first place. So that is an issue that needs to be looked at for sure. You also say educate every woman and uh, that would eliminate a lot of problems. <laughs> you know, it really would. I mean, apart from it, the fact that it's just right that girls go to school because, you know, thousands of millions of, of children miss out on going to school, but especially girls in many countries around the world, you know, it's, it's a morally right that they should be allowed to go to school. But it has loads of great knock on effects in terms of uh, actually in terms of climate change and, and carbon drawdown if girls get educated. 
Well, Rowan, it's great to speak with you. The book is How to Save the World for Just a Trillion Dollars. You can check out, uh, there's the Twitter address on your screen, and there's the cover of the book. Good to speak with you, Rowan. Okay, thanks for having me. Great to be on.